Boy, that certainly would be the best day of your life, right? To uh, win one of those yes. jackpots now at six, seven hundred million dollars. Wow. Listen, <laughs> if uh, if you don't play, you're definitely not going to win. That's so true. if you want to get in on it, now's the chance. <laughs> well, we have the jackpot with the weather here because uh, we're experiencing <laughs> June and January. I know the spring, summer like whatever you want to call it. It is warm. I mean, people were in bikinis yesterday. This is the middle of January, the heart of winter, and we're talking about 80s, getting close to 90 degrees. Look how beautiful this is as we see that early morning glow. I mean, this is just pretty gorgeous conditions, but yes, it will be warm. What we also are dealing with Santa Ana winds. They're actually peaking right now this morning till about sunrise time. We'll see pretty strong gusts. We've already seen them as high as 70 to 80 miles per hour in our ridge tops of the mountains, but it's drying things out, bringing in that warm air, and it's going to stay warm through the weekend. Jenny. I'm going to spare you with like a long traffic report because there's not much happening. So number one, your travel times are fine. Number two, no major crashes reported. Yeah, we've got ongoing construction. You can see from those blue icons, but none of them are causing any big issues. Back to you. Our top story here, the push to distribute the coronavirus vaccine around the county is picking up here today, this time in the South Bay. This is part of a new effort to fight the pandemic in a region that's really feeling the impact. News 8's Evan Irani joining us live from Imperial Beach to break it all down. And just a short time ago, we heard from Mayor Serge Dedina, very emotional. Very candid. Yeah, he spoke with us uh, telling us how important it was not only for his family and the people around him, but for the South Bay community as a whole who has been hit especially hard uh, by the coronavirus pandemic. This latest location at the Imperial Beach Civic Center will serve as one of the vaccination sites and one of the only vaccination sites in the county, aside from Petco Park as that super site location. Now, uh, we are still trying to get those numbers of exactly how many people will be able to get vaccinated at this location specifically, but it will be less than the super site locations because these pod locations that they're going to be dispersing across the county are going to serve as kind of those local locations for anyone in the neighborhood to come and get their vaccine once they're eligible right now, still in that phase one a category. If you want to sign up on the website for their vaccine, but we want to give you some of that sound uh, that we had just from earlier uh, this morning with Serge Jadina, the mayor of Imperial Beach on how important and, and really how what a huge step this is to have one of these vaccinations sites in the South Bay. There's a lot of folks that have been just living on the edge and, you know, living really, it's been really tough. And so this is that first stop of getting back to normal. <laughs> Sorry, it, it, it's been really, look, it's, it's not, it hasn't been that hard for me, but it's been hard for everybody. And I'm, we're all tired of this, but, you know, as a former athlete, triathlete, swimmer, surfer, runner, I know that when you get to the near the end of the race, man, you got to push hard. And right now we're we're a little bit we're not there yet, and we're going to have to get uncomfortable, more uncomfortable and push hard to get there. And this pod location opens today at the Imperial Beach Civic Center. It will open at 9.30 a.m. and stay open until 3.30 p.m. You can go online to vaccinationsuperstationsd.com to book an appointment at this location or at any of the other locations that are open in the county. They're calling these vaccination locations pods, which stands for point of dispensing, and they'll be distributed across the county. So they're hoping to have upwards of 40 pods across the county, but this is one of the very first to launch. And these pods won't have the capacity to vaccinate nearly as many people as those super site locations like Petco Park, but the goal is to eventually have upwards of 40 of them, like I mentioned, uh, across the area to ensure that uh, those vaccines are distributed equitably. Now, the county does not have, they do have a limited supply of the vaccine, so although the state of California launched that plan to have anyone over the age of 65 able to get their vaccine sooner, the county does say right now they are only open to phase 1A participants. That means those in the healthcare industry or those working in long-term nursing facilities. They will soon get another shipment, a larger shipment of vaccines, in which case more people will be able to get vaccinated and then they'll open it up to those over 65 or with underlying health conditions. But for now, this is a big step in getting one of those vaccination locations to the South Bay again, opening at 930 today. You can head to our website for more information. You can also head to that uh, vaccination website. That's vaccinationsuperstationsd.com to actually schedule your appointment to get the first coronavirus vaccine. I'll send things back to you, Eric and Stella.
Evan, thank you. County officials are reporting 2,595 new COVID cases and 53 deaths, bringing the death toll past the 2,000 mark to 2,005. About 6% of the latest 42,000 tests came back positive. Hospitalizations remain a concern. 90% of all ICU beds in San Diego County are full. The county has reported a 56% increase in the number of COVID-19 related hospitalizations in just the past 30 days. And new this morning, President-elect Joe Biden has named former FDA head David Kessler to lead the nationwide vaccine efforts. This comes as the president-elect will unveil his plan for vaccinating 100 million Americans in his first 100 days in the White House. Last night, Biden laid out details of his nearly $2 trillion economic recovery plan. It includes $1,400 checks for many Americans, an extension of unemployment benefits, and a hold on evictions through September. The fight is on to get our student athletes back on the field. They have been on the sidelines for nearly a year. So today, rallies will be held statewide in a push to resume school sports. And News 8's Chris Grow live at Torrey Pines High School with what we can expect. Chris? Uh, good morning, Eric and Sally. And look, all across California, a lot of parents have been upset with really wanting to know when it is that their kids can return to sports. Now, there is a timeline that has been put out, especially is reliant on what tier your county or your region is. But this group, Let Them Play, wants that to be thrown aside. They want kids to return to sports starting now. And leading the charge here locally, a very familiar voice uh, with in terms of when it comes to uh, opposing some of these COVID-19 restrictions, County Supervisor Jim Desmond. We can do this, we can do it safely, and we can beat the virus and have our lives, livelihoods, and children and their activities open again. And so De Desmond will be leading a rally that will be happening here at Torrey Pines High School at 930 at a.m. Uh, and then w there will be a statewide push with multiple groups, multiple locations at 4 o'clock. Again, the idea is that the state and CIF hears their voices about wanting their kids to resume sports immediately. It all started really with a Facebook group called Let Them Play. About two weeks ago, they were formed. So far, it already has more than 30,000 followers. Uh, they they want to see uh, youth sports resume after this long pause. The concerns that they have range from the mental and physical well-being of kids that no longer have these activities to keep them busy, to keep them stimulated, uh, to keep them away from maybe some of uh, the things that are going on in their community, to also potentially losing out on scholarships to kids from other states that have resumed high school and interscholastic sports and basically not being able to put their skills on display uh, either through in-person scouts scouting or uh, game film that is a little bit more current for these scouts and colleges that are still working. We did speak with the Carlsbad High School baseball player who told us really what they want is to just be heard that they want to play. It's a lot harder and we just want to compete and I'm, I know every single athlete out there just wants to be able to play again and get back to the normal normal things that, that have been going on. So hopefully we'll just hopefully things come back to normal and we'll be all good. And now real quick here, the CIF it did release a tier modification system on when certain sports can return based on their season and also based on what color tier system uh, your county is in. That's up on our website. Go to CBS8.com. But I do have to say January 25th, that's when schools can resume playing each other. However, if you are under a stay at home order like Southern California is, uh, none of that is possible. Only training allowed. Eric and Stella. Chris, thanks for that. Another community search is being held today for a missing Chula Vista mother of three. Last night, loved ones held a vigil for May Millette at Mount San Miguel Park, where she was last seen on January 7th. So far, police have not found evidence of a crime. They say Millette's husband, Larry, is cooperating. News 8 spoke to him on the phone. Larry tells us he's a private person and he didn't go to the vigil, but is grateful for the support from the community. He's holding out hope they will find his wife. Larry says he's worried because she missed their daughter's birthday on Sunday. It's the concerning and alarming part is uh, she wouldn't be gone this long. I don't want to speculate. There's a lot of speculation. When I got to see a little bit of it, I was just overwhelmed and thankful for all the support. And he's referring there at the end at uh, the outpouring of support at the vigil. Uh, you can, uh, if you have any information, you're asked to just call Chula Vista Police.
Dangerous fire conditions continue here today. Firefighters watching for hot spots after they stopped the spread of a brush fire in San Marcos here. It started in a field near Palomar College yesterday afternoon. At last check, the Comet fire was 50 acres and 90% contained. The cause is still under investigation. So we got the hot temperatures, the dry mm -hmm. conditions out there, and then we have the wind here too, Netta. Yeah, and it's actually peaking this morning. We're seeing our strongest gusts of this latest round of Santa Ana's right now. In fact, especially in our East County Mountains. Yesterday, when that fire started by Palomar College, it wasn't as windy, but the relative humidity was down to 10, 12 percent. It was really dry and warm as we all felt it. Now here's a view from San Miguel, looking out east where you see the sun, uh, that glow from the sun as we wait for the official sunrise, but. Right around sunrise, we could see our temperatures, or excuse me, our winds getting stronger. Here's a few of the records that we saw broke or tied yesterday. And Santee, by the way, 91 degrees, the warmest place in the country. Yet again, that's two days in a row that you get that award, if you will. A wind advisory also been issued early this morning. This is going to last until 2 p.m. So the Weather Service issuing this right around 4 a.m. our time uh, because of these strong gusts, 55, 65 miles per hour right now in our mountains. But we've seen gusts even stronger. Stronger than that. Sill Hill 82, 70 at places like Booker Hill, Laguna. Right now, looking at our current gust, 33 in Alpine, 30 in Laguna. But you see the shadings in the red, that's a little bit stronger. And throughout the next couple hours, we'll keep seeing these winds picking up a little bit. So around 7, 8 o'clock this morning, it'll get a little more strong across the mountains, extending to the foothills all the way to our coastline. So certainly can increase our fire danger. Our dew points are in the teens, relative humidity very low. And yes, coming up in a few minutes. We'll talk about that heat up as well.